Homo sapiens, who are we? Where do we come from? In chapter 10, we will continue our quest to discover who we are and where we came from with a slight digression that will provide us with a richer background into the origin of Homo sapiens in Africa and their spread out of Africa into the rest of the world. We're going to backtrack a bit in order to flesh out our understanding of the evolution of Homo sapiens. Beyond the obvious genetic elements, the evolutionary process is impacted by a myriad of factors working in concert to create the filter of natural selection. In the case of Homo sapiens, we can include climate, technology, and culture among these factors. We will first begin with a look at the climatic conditions that impacted early humans, both archaic and modern. Climate has played a key role in the evolution of Homo sapiens. Back in Chapter 5, we looked at the part played by plate tectonics and how the changing surface of the Earth impacted climatic conditions which in turn impacted the evolution of our ancient ancestors. Climate impacts a range of environmental factors including food resources, temperature ranges, forestation, and sea levels, just to name a few. These climatic changes create challenges which organisms must adapt to or perish. This was true for Homo sapiens as well as all coexisting life forms. Let's take a look at the climatic conditions which impacted early Homo sapiens. We will start a look at the climatic impact on the evolution of the genus Homo with a quick overview of the last one million years of our evolutionary history. Around the one million year mark we would find Homo erectus ranging across parts of Africa into Europe and Asia. As we approach the 800,000 to 700,000 year mark, we would find Homo heidelbergensis evolving out of the Homo erectus populations, especially in the western end of the Homo erectus range. As we approach the 300,000 year mark, we would find Homo neanderthalensis evolving out of the Homo heidelbergensis populations in present day Europe and western parts of the Middle East, basically the northern area of the Homo heidelbergensis range. As we approach the 200,000 year mark, we would begin to find Homo sapiens appearing in eastern Africa or the southern area of the heidelbergensis range. Here we begin to get a clear sense of the impact of climate on the evolution of the genus Homo. In the northern or European range of Heidelbergensis, the species was contending with a much cooler and more tundra-like environment at times as the glaciers advanced and retreated over thousands of years. In the southern or African range of Heidelbergensis, the species was adapting to a warmer and drier environment. In the northern range, with its cooler temperatures, adaptations favored by natural selection would be towards a body type that conserved body temperature against the cold. This is what we find in Neanderthals who tended toward a shorter, stockier body type which was better adapted to heat retention in a cold environment. In the southern range, with its warmer temperatures, adaptations favored by natural selection would be towards a body type that mitigated overheating. Homo sapiens with their taller, thinner body type display this climatic adaptation. The expansive geographic range of Homo erectus was exposing the genus Homo to a broader range of climatic conditions providing natural selection a larger laboratory in which to experiment. Homo sapiens and Homo neanderthalensis were the result. Let's now narrow our climatic focus down to the last three glacial periods. We want to take a look at how these glacial periods impacted the environment of archaic humans, namely Heidelbergensis and Neanderthalensis, as well as Homo sapiens. The glacial periods can go by a variety of names depending on location. We will stick with the European glacial names in our discussion. We'll start at the 455,000 year mark before the present with the beginning of the Mendel Glacial Period. If we look at this graphic showing the glacial periods over the last 455,000 years, we see there are three main glacial periods and two major interglacial periods. The Mendel Glacial Period lasted from around 455,000 years ago to about 380,000 years ago. It was followed by the Mendel Riss Interglacial Period which lasted from 380,000 years ago to about 200,000 years ago. The mendel riss Interglacial was followed by the Riss Glacial Period, which lasted from 200,000 years ago to 130,000 years ago. The retreat of the Riss Glaciers marked the beginning of the riss firm Interglacial Period, which lasted from 130,000 years ago to 110,000 years ago. Around 110,000 years ago, the glaciers began to expand, marking the beginning of the Verm Glacial Period which lasted till roughly 10,000 years ago. The 10,000 year point marks the official end of the Pleistocene and the beginning of the Holocene, the current geological epoch in which we now live. 
If we look at the status of the genus Homo at the beginning of the Mendel Glacial period, around 455,000 years ago, we would find a broad population of Homo heidelbergensis living and thriving from northern Europe down into southern Africa. This provided a wide range of climatic conditions stretching across some 6,500 miles or 10,460 kilometers. The pressures of natural selection would have varied greatly across this range largely due to the diverse climatic conditions. If we look at examples familiar to us today, we can readily see how climate impacts people and cultures. The Inuit of the Arctic North have a different culture and set of environmental adaptations compared to the San Bushmen of Southern Africa. The key element in this cultural variance being climate, which impacts temperature ranges. Life in whatever form is subject to the laws of physics, in the case of temperature, thermodynamics. Unlike most other organisms, the members of the genus Homo are able to adapt to temperature variations across a large geographic range through cultural and technological adaptations such as clothing, shelter, and the use of fire. The extensive geographic range of Homo heidelbergensis exposed its populations to a variety of climatic conditions and temperature ranges. These diverse conditions impacted evolving populations of Homo heidelbergensis giving rise to Homo neanderthalensis in the north and Homo sapiens in the south. To get a more intimate understanding of the impact of climate on evolving populations, let's look at how climatic conditions would have impacted Homo heidelbergensis. Specifically, let's look at the effect of temperature on the human body and by extension that of our hominid relatives. This will be drilling down into the minutiae of evolution somewhat, but hopefully it will highlight how evolution is influenced by a myriad of factors that impact populations of living organisms day to day. Modern humans have a temperature comfort zone of roughly 65 degrees to 75 degrees. A zone of livable tolerance would range from roughly 40 degrees to about 95 degrees. Outside this tolerance zone, our bodies start to run into problems functioning without protection. Homo heidelbergensis may have been adapted to a broader range of tolerance than modern humans, but probably not by a significant amount. Homo sapiens and our hominin relatives are endotherms or warm-blooded creatures. We maintain our body heat through internal processes such as metabolism or chemical reactions that produce heat. Humans maintain a core body temperature of about 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit or 37 degrees Celsius. If our core temperature falls below 94 degrees, hypothermia begins to set in. Core body temperatures below 85 degrees lead to the body's inability to heat itself and death results. Above 101 degrees, hyperthermia sets in. Core body temperatures above 105 degrees can lead to a lethal hyperthermic state. The reason for this sensitivity to temperature is due to the body's dependence on biochemical processes to function. Outside the optimal temperature range, these biochemical functions start to fail and the organism dies. Besides basic metabolic processes for maintaining body temperature, we have evolved other adaptations that work to protect against the cold and the heat. Shivering is an adaptation that helps fight hypothermia by generating body heat. Sweating fights hyperthermia through evaporation, which cools the body. In maintaining optimal core body temperature, an organism's shape or surface to volume ratio is important. The greater the surface area in relation to volume, the better one is adapted to a warm environment as it is easier to dissipate heat. In the case of heat, tall and thin is better. The greater the volume is in relation to surface area, the better one is adapted to a cold environment as it is easier to retain heat. In the case of cold, short and stocky is better. These are just the adaptations we see in Neanderthals adapted to a colder environment and Homo sapiens adapted to a warmer environment. Homo heidelbergensis was being impacted across its geographic range from Europe to Africa as the ice ages waxed and waned over thousands of years. Those not suited to survive the conditions in any given area of that range perished, thus impacting the gene pool. This basic biological need to maintain an optimal core body temperature in order to survive drove technological and social development. When we talk technology, we are talking intellect or the ability to visualize cause and effect and use problem-solving skills to arrive at solutions. Solutions against the cold, such as clothing, the use of fire, adequate shelter, and even nutritional choices that increase one's odds of surviving display intellectual prowess. 
Those best able to use technology to solve environmental problems were those most likely to survive. Social interaction is also important to survival. In a cold environment, humans sleeping close together in groups will benefit from the collective warmth of their bodies. The collective experiences and support of a group of people will increase survival odds for all. Hunters working in cooperating groups will be more successful than individuals in providing the nutritional needs important to survival, especially in harsh winter-like conditions. The ability to maintain an optimal core body temperature also impacts the immune system and the health of an organism. This influences an organism's ability to deal with disease and parasites. Another important factor affecting evolving populations. And all of this because we need to maintain an optimal core body temperature so basic biochemical processes can be maintained that assure our survival. Across the entire range of Homo heidelbergensis, basic biological needs filtered by environment, technological prowess, social adaptations, and geographic separations were diversifying the gene pool. The end result would be Homo neanderthalensis in the north of the range and Homo sapiens in the south. The impact of climate and its varying temperature ranges is as apparent today as when we look back thousands and millions of years. The signs of evolution are all around us. Our world is always changing. The populations of creatures that inhabit that world change as the pressures of natural selection work to cull those unsuited to the changing conditions. This is true for all living things, including the genus Homo. In chapter 11, we will continue our look at the epic tale of Homo sapiens as we examine our interaction with our cousin, Homo neanderthalensis.